Hey everyone, today I'm back at this small lake where the drain is that always seems to clog up. Today I'm going to be taking a few water samples to test because a lot of people left in the comments they wanted to know how much phosphate is in this pond because of the extreme amount of algae last time when I was here clearing it. All the algae is gone now since the weather's been colder, but the phosphate and everything would still be in the water. I'm also going to do a whole bunch of other tests such as pH, pneumonia, nitrate, nitrite, and also heavy metals such as iron. I'm going to take another sample at the end of the culvert where it comes out. Because this thing is constantly running, I doubt we'll get any high iron, but we'll do it anyways. I'm going to perform the test after I get home. I'm taking a sample from this end and the other end with these bottles. This one here I wrote the word end so I know which is which. I clean these out a few times. Now I'm going to dunk them in the water, rinse them out a bunch of times. And also I'm going to try to get a little bit of green pond scum in there too so we can look at that under a microscope. See if there's any plant life or anything moving around in a drop of water from this pond. This is even lower than the time I walked through it like two months ago. That proves there's no beavers around anymore because that part over there that I removed, they never rebuilt that. No more beavers. You see in the water here how it's all orangey? That is showing me there is a lot of iron. I'm not gonna step into the water because I'll stir it up. If I stir up the water, I won't get an accurate test of what's actually in it because that is a lot of iron along the bottom. The water's a lot lower than the time I actually went through this. It hasn't rained in a while. So let's take the sample. On now, and I'm going to start testing the water here. I have nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, copper, phosphate pH and this one over here is going to test for hardness, chlorine, iron, copper, lead, nitrate, nitrite again, total alkalinity and pH. A few of them are repeated but this one here I bought for the heavy metals so we can know if there's any heavy metals in there. I think we're going to get high iron but that's about it. Over here I have some microscope slides to the side that I'm going to put a drop of water on just to see exactly what's in it, just to see if there's anything moving around in there, if, see if there's anything interesting. But we're going to start doing this. These pH tests here go for about $8. The rest of these tests here online go for about $16 per kit. This one over here that has a whole bunch of the common things goes for about $18, but it does not include some of the important ones like pneumonia and phosphate is what causes algae to grow. We're going to see if there's a lot of that. I'm thinking there's a lot because there's a lot of algae at that pond in the summertime. This here is the cheapest pH test kit available on the market. I'll leave a link to this in the description. I'm going to make a separate video of me trying this thing out. This literally cost 76 cents with free shipping from China. We're going to see how that thing does. It's a whole bunch of test strips in there. It's pretty good. You get a hundred of them. If it works. I have a dripper here, which I just sanitized. So it's clean water. I'm going to go ahead, go into here. Rinse it out a few times. Now I'm going to fill each test tube with the appropriate amount of water. So the test comes out accurate. I'm going to fill them up to the line.
This is much easier to do with a dripper like this instead of actually dunking the tube into the water. There we go, that's all good. Right here I'm going to add some of this water into a cup so that I can do the test with the dips. This pond water is crystal clear. The instructions for this say to dip it in for about two seconds. There we go, put it off to the side. This will develop in about one minute. We can go check on that. I'm gonna start adding all the chemicals to the test tubes. I pre-shook them all before the test. This one here requires me to put five drops. Give it a quick shake. Most of these tests are instant. A few of them take a minute, like the ammonia. Going on to nitrate, which I have to put 10 drops of each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give that one a quick shake. That one there looks perfect. Looks like there's none of that. No nitrate or nitrite. Just added eight drops of the pneumonia, number one. Eight drops of the other. Okay, eight drops of that one. This test here takes a few minutes to develop. This one isn't instant. Next one is a copper test, which I highly doubt there's any copper in a pond. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there we go. Next one is phosphate. Six drops of each for phosphate. One, two, three, four, five, six. Other bottle. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Give that a moment. The color that's giving me isn't even on the chart, so that takes a few minutes. Next one is just standard pH, which takes three drops. I can already tell you that's really acidy water. Give that a shake. The pH in that pond is about probably 6.2, which isn't the worst. That's not too bad. Okay, so nitrate and nitrite are zero. Pneumonia in the pond is about 0 0.25, which is almost perfect. That's not a danger at all. The copper test here 
in order to do that one, you got to look at this from above. Like you line it up to the dot and look above. There is zero copper in that pond. The next one is phosphate. How much phosphate is in this pond? I'd give it a 0 0.5. pH. Around 6.2. Okay, here's a closer look for everyone. Zero. Zero nitrate, zero nitrite. Pneumonia. Very little. Copper. Line it up. Nothing. Phosphate. Very low amount. I'd say it's around here somewhere. Just just a little bit of phosphate, which is a big surprise considering all the algae. pH. It's between those two. Now we're going to take a look at this other test here, which is more complicated for iron. These things are so difficult to pick up off a flat table unless you have fingernails. I gotta slide it over. Okay, so it goes like this. pH. This one is giving us the same same exact result as the other one. The total alkalinity. Probably around that 40 mark. Nitrate, nitrite, just like the other, it's saying zero. Lead is zero. Copper is zero. Okay, iron is zero. That might change when I test the other end of the pond out of the culvert. Iron is zero. Total hardness, the hardness of the pond is around 120. So that is pretty good. Now I'm going to put a drop of the water onto a slide. The pond. Just a tiny little drop of water on there. Get the cover slip. Put it down at an angle so you don't get any bubbles trapped under there. That minimizes the bubbles. Now I'm going to clean this thing out before we start the other. Okay, so going through that culvert pipe would not have changed any of those except maybe the iron. So that's really all I have to test for. I don't have to do all those steps again. And I don't think the iron really is going to change because the water is constantly flowing. But we're going to test it. There should not be any difference, I'm thinking... So let's get another test strip, dip it in there. This result will come out in about one minute. Okay, while we're waiting for this, I want to quickly show you exactly how good these test things work. I'm going to go ahead and take another one. That water right here you're seeing is something I created just so I could test the copper part of it. I mixed a bunch of pennies in a water bottle and I shook it up once a day for one month just to get the copper poisoning in the water so I could show how that works. So this is copper contaminated water right there. I just took a dip there. I'm going to put this down, give it a minute to develop. Now, what I have here is a bunch of baking soda in a cup. I'm going to pour this water in there and this baking soda just made the pH in that skyrocket. So I'm going to take another one here. As soon as you see me dip it, the pH test is going to turn bright red. The pH is the one on the bottom. I want you to see how fast that thing turns because of what I'm doing. Watch, as soon as I dip, it's going to turn really bright red. You saw that? Immediate results. So these tests are pretty accurate compared to the old test tube ones. I trust the test tube ones better but this is definitely pretty accurate. So now has anything changed on the end? Okay, so the hardness is the same. There's no chlorine on the end there. 
to the iron. The iron looks exactly the same. There's very little on both ends of the pipe, so the pipe does not change it at all. Everything there is pretty much the same, except the pH, for some reason, has gone up to around 6.8 by going through the pipe. That is one difference. The pH seems to have gone up. Starting off, 100 times zoom, one drop of pond water from the area of that big lake drain culvert. This is 100 times. We can see lots of plant segments. Lots of different plants. Let's take a closer look at this. Going in 250 times Going in again 1,000 times. There we go. going again 2,500 times. I doubt I'll see anything here. It's a little too zoomed in. something there. Water from the end of the culvert, 100 times zoomed in. Mostly just a bunch of small plant particles in here. I've been looking at this for a while. I don't see anything really moving around. Like you see all that, that's just debris from the water. Just things that float around. You'll see debris in pretty much any water unless it's super filtered. Just a bunch of small things in here. I'm going to try go going back to the, where all that debris was so I can zoom into some of that. There we go. I'm going to take this up now to 250 times. They're just random things in the water. Gonna go now to 1,000 times. Just little pieces of plant debris. This is now 2,500 times.
there's no way around this. It has to be dark when you're zoomed in this far with a microscope. Because if you try to turn up the light, you just flood it and you can see less. You see? I add some light. It just makes the image worse to see. Just a tiny bit of light is good. Not much moving around. I'm going to get the piece of pond scum.